Yeah, so um, I definitely blend my faith because when I share, you know, anything that happens in my life. So, for example, if I share like a hardship or a struggle that I went through, I, you know, there's always Bible verses that like connect with that particular thing. So I would share that in in the blog post. Or um, if there's like a message, um, for example, I wrote a blog post about forgiving yourself, self-forgiveness, because, you know, we talk about forgiveness a lot and we talk about forgiving other people who have hurt us. Right. But it's not really talked about forgiving ourselves. You know, we make mistakes and we are usually our hardest critics. Right. So I wrote a blog post about that, about forgiving ourselves. And that was just a message that I felt like God just sent to me to write about. I write about grief a lot because I've I've um, suffered a lot of lo- a loss in my life, like including my mom, my grandfather, uh, my mother-in-law, and then I had a miscarriage. So I write about grief and just how God helped me overcome um, that season and Bible verses that like really stood out to me during that time. Um, so yeah, I definitely um, put in my faith in in my writing as much as I can. Okay, welcome to Living the Next Chapter. I have Heidi with me. Heidi is a blog writer, an author, a podcaster. Can we nerd out there a little bit for a second? A podcaster. Hey, we got everything all in one. Heidi's with us today to talk about all the great stuff happening. Hello, Heidi. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Dave, for having me on here. I'm so excited for this conversation. Okay, so you did kind of burst my balloon. You've had another interview before me today. So oh. I got to step up. I got to step up now because it sounded like you had a great interview. And again, you're a podcaster. Yeah. So I have to, I, I got to sit up straight for this one. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. It's great to have you here. Thanks. It's great to be here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your podcast because I want to nerd mm-hmm. out about that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the name of your podcast and how long have you been podcasting for? Yes. Yeah, so the name of my podcast is The American Dream in the Eyes of Immigrants. And I started this podcast in March of this year, 2022. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. And how's it going so far as a podcaster? It's going amazing. Um, honestly, you know, I started without knowing what I was doing, but I was like, I just want to start and get out there. You know, I Googled how to start a podcast. I There was a bunch of articles that came out, so I did a little bit of research, and I realized that Anchor was how I wanted to go. It just seemed like it was like the easiest one. So I Good. chose Anchor, set it all up, and um, I started interviewing with my family. And then my neighbor and a f- and friends, you know, because um, I'm a, uh, my parents are immigrants, so my whole family are immigrants from the Dominican Republic, and that's what the podcast is about. It's about immigration story, about them coming to the United States, their journey, adapting to a new culture, new language, new country, and you know, uh, cultural shocks. You know, it's just different. You know, navigating. Um, a, a new country. So I wanted to hear these stories and share these stories with the goal of tr- um, changing the narrative of immigration here in the United States, just because, um, you know, powerful platforms have sp- uh, put out false narratives, false information. And so it's like, if we sit down and listen to what these people actually go through to come here, why they come, and and we can be more empathetic and compassionate, right? So that's what I, I want to change the the narrative. So be more empathetic, more compassion. And and it's not like these people want to make this tough decision to leave their country. It's, you know, mm-hmm. valid reasons. You know, they're fleeing for the hardship in their country. They're looking for a better opportunity. And that's what this country was built on. You know, it was yeah. built on um, opportunities, um better future, freedom. You know, we have a lot of freedom here in the United States that other countries don't have. And, and they are, they're taking that risk of their life because they do truly believe that it will be better here. Now they come here and they realize, you know, it's, it's hard work and, 
and they're willing to put in the work to get a better life. So it started off, yes, friends, family, and then word of mouth. I've joined a few Facebook groups uh, for podcasters. So I was able to get a few guests from there. And I've gotten a lot of word of mouth. So it's like a guest comes and they're like, oh, I know somebody who would be great. And then nice. they send, yeah, they send their information. So I've uh, I've talked to quite a few people. I do put episodes just twice a month so it's every other Tuesday because I have you know the writing going on and then I, mm. I'm also a medical coder so I have to balance my time as best as I can so wow yeah <laughs> so if somebody was coming to your podcast for the first time is there an episode that you would say hey start here this is the one I think you should start with is there one that pops out the, actually, the very first episode, yeah. and the reason okay. why I say that is because, like I like I said, I had no idea what I was doing, and the very first episode is with my cousin, right? So I'm, I knew her, so I'm, I'm more comfortable talking with her than with a stranger, right? And I put in a microphone, but it wasn't the headphones, right, to my phone, because that's how I was recording it with my phone. And I couldn't hear her. So, like, all of that is recorded. We're, like, back and forth, like, hey, can you hear me? No, wait, can you hear me? I can't. So, I, she was like, are you going to edit all of this out? I was like, yeah, 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 no worries. So, then when I'm, like, listening back to the episode, I was dying laughing. And I was like, no, I'm keeping it. And, honestly, I'm so glad I kept it because I've gotten a lot of compliments on that. They're like, oh, my God, this is so funny. This is great. And I kept it because, also, I just wanted to be authentic. You know, I just want to be my authentic self. I had no idea what I was doing. And then also it's just like maybe to provide um, encouragement or um, aspiration if someone wants to start a podcast. You know, it's like, yeah. look, I started my first episode. I had no idea what I was doing, but I did it, you know, and it's out there. So yeah. that's definitely the first, the first, very first episode is the one that I would suggest anybody to start um, listening to. <laughs> I love it. What have you learned about yourself as a podcaster, what have you taught yourself? I have learned that I'm actually good at interviewing people. Like it, it comes natural. Yeah, it comes naturally and I enjoy it. I really do. And the more that I've done it, because I've done it since March, right? And the more that I've done it, like I send my guests um, questions beforehand, right? Just because mm -hmm. immigration can be a, uh, you know, a touchy subject. So there's, I want to make sure that they're comfortable sharing you know, so but as the conversation co goes on, some questions come up and I'll and I'll tell them. But I realized the more that I've done it, like the more like I know how to ask certain things to kind of like, OK, can you like elaborate more on that or, and things like that? So, yes, I've definitely learned that I had this skill that I didn't know. And I and I truly, truly enjoy it. it it's it's brought like. I feel it's brought a lot uh, to my life, just listening to these stories, learning about different cultures and being able to share the stories with the world, too. Yeah, I think being a good host also helps you to be a good guest. Oh. And you start <laughs> you start listening to people better as well, like in regular yes. everyday life, right? Yes. Like you're not like, yeah. Yeah, in regular conversation, you're like more like you're more focused because really when you're doing this, like you really have to be listening to them. You can't be sidetracked or doing anything else. And yes, I definitely felt um, learned that like now that I'm talking on regular conversation, like I'm listening more, paying attention more and and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, podcasting is fun and I'm so happy to hear you're doing this and I'm glad it's opening doors for you as well. So, oh, thank you. But you've also... In your past, you're doing blog writing as well. Yeah. What got you started writing blogs? I started in 2014. I had okay. just recently had my daughter. Yep. And I, I originally was going to be just for myself, like a diary, like an online diary, just to like write what was going on in my life, um, things that I, I was going through, just to look back and reflect. And over time, it has it has evolved. So what I share now is faith-based, um, encouraging posts. I do share my life. I share my poetry on there now. And then I also share book reviews. I'm very, I'm an avid reader. I'm always reading mm -hmm. and I love recommending books to people that I feel has impacted me because I love learning. So that's what I share on, on my blog. 
I also write for Medium and then on Medium, um, it's really, it's a platform for writers and you can get paid for it. Um, the mm -hmm. more people read your stuff, the more you get paid. And there you can really write about anything. So you'll find articles about all types of uh, topics and, and things. So that's what I love about Medium is I, I learn a lot. Like a lot of people share their lives or they share like their knowledge, tips and stuff. So that's a really great platform just to like find out information about anything. Um, and I've, I'm trying to branch out into freelance writing. So like, you know, writing blogs for small businesses and websites and things like that. So I'm trying to nice. do that as well. Mm -hmm. That's a gift. That's a gift. Tell yeah. me, um, tell me a little bit about how your how you blend your faith into what you're working on with your blog, um, how it kind of impacted maybe, uh, just kind of how you approach creating and writing. Yeah. How does that kind of go together? Yeah. So, um, I definitely blend my faith because when I share, you know, anything that happens in my life. So for example, if I share like a hardship or a struggle that I went through, I, you know, there's always Bible verses that like connect with that particular thing. So I would share that in, in the blog post or um, if there's like a message, um, for example, I wrote a blog post about forgiving yourself, self-forgiveness. Mm. Cause you know, we talk about forgiveness a lot and we talk about forgiving other people who have hurt us. Right. But it's not really talked about forgiving ourselves. You know, we make mistakes and we are usually our hardest critics. Right. So I wrote a blog post about that, about forgiving ourselves. And that was just a message that I felt like God just sent to me to write about. Yeah. I write about grief a lot because I've, I've, um, suffered a lot of a loss in my life, like including my mom, my grandfather, um, my mother-in-law, and then I had a miscarriage. So mm -hmm. I write about grief and just how God helped me overcome um, that season and Bible verses that like really stood out to me during that time. Um, so yeah, I definitely um, put in my faith in, in my writing as much as I can. See, that's what I love about content now, whether it's a podcast, a book, a blog. Uh, usually you'd have to have like an audience. You'd have to be like a minister and stand up on a stage mm -hmm. and speak to the audience, right? To the congregation. You now have all these different tools to reach out to an audience and share your message. And yeah. the beauty of all this is every one of us has a story yes. and our stories can help people. Yes. Right. And if we're quiet and silent and we don't share our story, there's somebody out there that's not going to be, they're going to suffer or struggle because they don't have somebody that's, been mm -hmm. been there and can share some of their insights and help and support them. And that's amazing that you can take all these different things and use them and, and share your message that way. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's exciting, right? So yeah. let's jump into the book now. You've you've now written a book. You're a published author. And <laughs> as you've mentioned, I think you said your daughter says you're quite famous now oh, that you're a published to author. Her, I'm famous, yeah. <laughs> you, you sign books. You have events. You even squeeze me in as oh. the second <laughs> second podcast of your day. By the way, you squeeze oh, me man. into your calendar. Um, but it's amazing to see all this great stuff happening for you. Tell me, what was the idea behind the book? Uh, you woke up one day and said, "I'm going to write a book." Tell me yeah. about that day. Tell yeah, me about that day. That's exactly how it happened, Dave. How did you know? I just See? I just woke up on a Tuesday morning. I was like, I'm going to write a book. Looked at the calendar. <laughs> yeah, yes. I'll write a book today. Yeah, the March 15th, <laughs> I'm going to write a book. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what happened was I started writing poetry when I was young, right? Okay. And it was just for me, just a creative outlet. I remember telling my husband, I was like, man, I used to write all the time. Like, I used to write stories. I uh, songs, even though I'm not a singer, but I used to, when I was young, I would just write everything. And, but I would keep it to myself. I wouldn't share. And I remember in seventh grade, I had a particular notebook where I had all my poetry. And for some reason I had the courage to share it with a friend. And when she read it, she was like, Heidi, these are really good. And I was, you know, I never really thought of it like, you know, as being good, but she was like, no, these, these are really good. And during so I stopped writing poetry for a few years and then once I was going through um, a really tough relationship and then with the death of my mother I started writing poetry again and that was what really helped me get my emotions out uh, my feelings just things that I was going through and 
since I was also, you know, blogging and in the writing world, I was attending writing conferences, um, connecting with other writers, and, you know, they would give tips and stuff. And I was like, maybe I can put these poems together and publish a book just, you know, to get my story out there and help people. Because the the book really goes through um, going through, like, being... Um, what's it called? Like being really devastated from the relationship, mm, right? Okay. Really like shattered. And then trying to put myself back together again, going through the healing journey. Um, you know, I went to therapy to deal with the, the you know, the toxic relationship, my, the, the death of my mother. So I, 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 all that is in the, in the poetry book and then the healing journey. And then I have one particular chapter for my mom. Um, she, before she passed, she got diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So I write, you know, about, um, our relationship, which, you know, it wasn't your traditional lovey mother daughter relationship. You know, um, a lot of people talk about daddy issues. Um, I feel like wounds with your mother is not really talked about much. So hmm. I share my um, wounds, um, you know, to connect with others. And then the last chapter is the rainbow because I, you know, there's always a rainbow at the end of the storm after, after the storm. So it's just like, it takes you through the journey. And that's what people who have read my book have told me that it's like, I feel like you took us through the story. Like I, I can feel the emotions. I can feel what you went through and, you know, it's just, they just tell me like, now it's just amazing to see like the out, like uh, out, the outcome, you know, of like mm -hmm. everything that I went through. And they're like, now I'm on the other side of it. And just, I'm just embracing everything that God is doing in my life. And, you know, it took me a while to get the courage to, to share. Um, but I'm really glad that I took the leap of faith to do it. And I'm just, in all of what God is doing in my life and I'm just embracing everything and I can, I, I look back and I can see like the reason why I went through everything I went through. And a lot of people, you know, have just told me that, um, they've, they've been able to connect, you know, cause we all go through hardships. We all go through challenges. And if you can, you know, share your story with just one person and you can connect with that one person, then it's worth it. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's so good. That's amazing. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about the response. People have now read the book. Yeah. Um, the people are coming back to you in, in your circle and they're yeah. giving you feedback. Yeah. What, what are some of the things you're hearing? Maybe, maybe something that surprised you and you're like, wow. Yeah. So one of the, I gave, so I, I had a like, what's it called? Like a little book launch, um, yeah. like team, right. Before I, I published because I wanted to get feedback and do and put book reviews out there. And one of them that really stuck with me was, um, I didn't know her. We connected through a writing group and she responded back to me and she said, if you are human, if you've gone through challenges, if you, you know, have just been through like a hard relationship or anything, like you need to read this book because as she said, like, it just, it's just a journey. It's just like a me too. I'm a friend. I'm here for you kind of, kind of book. And, and she also mentioned the illustrations. The illustrations were made by my aunt, who's an artist. And yes. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to um, add her to the project because she's super talented. And I'm like, we need to get your art out in the world. So I'm really glad that she hopped on this project for me. But that book review, like brought tears to my eyes because I legit, just felt like, yes, God, this is this is what I wanted it to be like for people to connect and feel and just know that we all go through through challenges and I'm here for you. Like I'm me too, you know? Mm -hmm. And I also hope that like if someone maybe is in a toxic relationship that they would get out, like have the courage to get out, or maybe like, you know, see uh, red flags beforehand and be like, no, like this is not for me. So yeah. So the feedback that I've been receiving has just been overwhelmingly good. Like it's just been like, oh my gosh, like something that I wrote is really connecting with people and they're really like, it's, it's deep. I actually even had one person because some of my poems are like short, like there'll be like one or two lines 
and then there's like some there's like a lot of spacing in the pages and i specifically mm-hmm. wanted it like that I, I remember my aunt told me she was like when i saw this she was like are you sure you want all this space like i was like yes that's exactly what i want let's put the pictures you know where you can and things like that so i had a person tell me that she used my poetry book as a journal so as she was reading it she wrote feelings and emotions and memories that it brought back to her and I was like wow like that wasn't even my intention but that's just amazing because I'm also since I'm a writer I'm a big journal I journal everything so I I that really like touched my heart because I was like wow like that wasn't my intentions but that's really cool that she was able to use it as a journal and write down her own feelings and things like that So tell me about the day when the book arrives, the printed copy arrives at your house and you're holding it for the first time. I recorded myself. What does that that feel like? Oh my gosh. I recorded myself because I wanted to share that moment with uh, my followers. So it's on my YouTube channel and it was just, I was scared, honestly, to open it. Like I remember sending a video to my family. It was like in the box. I was like, my book is in there. I can't open it. I'm scared. (laughs) And they were like, Heidi, just open it. Like, you're overreacting. I was like, no. But no, like, I recorded myself opening the book for the first time and looking at it. And I was like, wow, it's here. It's in my hands. I can smell it. I can feel it. I can touch it. It was it was really surreal. It was just like amazing. Like I I, I don't know. I can't even describe the feeling because it's like you have this vision in your head and you put the work in and you went through the obstacles and the struggles to get it. And I mean, I got, the process was not easy. Cause again, like I had no idea what I was doing. I was just doing researching and taking a step by step. And there was some moments where I was like very frustrated because things were not working the way they were supposed to be working. Like I almost started crying and I was like, no, like, why is this not working? And, but I prayed through the process and it was just like, once I had it in my hand, it's like, okay, it's all worth it. Like it's here finally. And it's just an incredible feeling. So what kind of doors do you think open up for you now that you have a book? You were talking maybe about doing some speaking maybe and some other things. Yeah. What kind of things can you do now that you have this? It's like a really nice business card, really. When you have a book in your hand, you're a published author. You Mm -hmm. can go maybe get places that you might not have gone before. Definitely. I got my first in-person speaking engagement because of the book. Um, I went. I had went to a women's networking event here um, in my town for, you know, women in business to network. And the very next month, I had published my book. And so the one of the founding members asked me if I would be a speaker at their event. I was like, I am honored what do you want me to talk about? And, you know, I was like, what, what am I going to talk about? And she was like, well, you know, talk about your book, your journey and and things like that. So I, it was actually the very next day after my book lunch party. So it was like the same weekend. So I was speaking at my book lunch party and then I had this event and it was just all emotions everywhere. But honestly, like after the event, like so many women told me that my story was so inspiring. Like, and that really was like, wow, like me, like I'm inspiring. What? But just hearing that it was just like, so, so humbling and honor. And so that opened that opportunity. And then like, I have friends too, like that have reached out. I was like, Oh, let me know when your next speaking event is. And it's like, what like I'm gonna have more speaking events you know (laughs) so it's definitely opened up um that I've definitely networked a lot because of it um connecting with other other people um I've been thinking about starting like writing workshops so if anybody is like um interested in you know getting into the writing or creative because one of the in the networking event one of the women too they told me that they used to write poetry but they stopped And so she was like, you know, thinking of like getting back into it. And I was like, yeah, I've been thinking about doing a, you know, creative writing work. And she was like, oh my gosh, if you do it, let me know. I'll sign up. And so definitely that, like, you know, speaking engagements, workshops, um, creative writing, uh, you know, like I mentioned, I'm big into journaling. So I sell journals and notebooks. So I was thinking like, oh, maybe I could do a journaling workshop, you know, because a lot of people think that it's hard, but you know, it's just, it's just getting started. So maybe just give them the little motivation and hope to, to get started. So yeah, it's definitely a few opportunities. <laughs> it's amazing. So, okay. So you talked a little bit earlier about going to like a conference or a, a thing and you're listening to other authors and stuff and you're in the mm-hmm. audience. You mm-hmm. don't have your book yet. 
-hmm. and you're listening to all these experts talking about yeah. writing and all this stuff. Now, you're the expert because you have a Ooh. book, right? <laughs> so yeah. there's somebody now listening to you who's sitting in the audience and they're like, Heidi, I don't even know where to start. Yeah. Like you're, you're a published author, Heidi, I'm not. What would you say to them? How do you, would you encourage somebody that's curious about, t about telling their story, but they just don't know where to start? Yes. Yeah, so I would tell them to connect with authors. Um, it does uh, definitely in the whatever niche that they want to write in. So if they're a fiction writer, you know, connect with fiction writer um, authors. If they're they want to write a memoir, connect with someone who's wrote, written a memoir. Um, follow them on social media. Uh, join Facebook groups. Uh, writing Facebook groups have been a tremendous, tremendous help because a lot of people share tips, their stories, um, and things like that. Resources. Um, and a lot of the writing conferences that I've attended have been posted on those writing groups. So um, definitely attend writing conferences because that's where I got the majority of my information on how to publish, which route to go, the traditional or the self-publishing route. And I decided to go the self-publishing route because I wanted more control of of how my book looked and everything. Um, I do have a long-term goal of being a traditional published author. Um, but yeah, you just definitely got to connect, connect with people, ask questions, um, the writing groups. I, I'm, that's where the majority of where I've learned and, and yeah, and just see which route was best for you. Um, I was listening, oh, po podcasts, writing podcasts are huge yeah. also. Um, so I was listening to this podcast and, uh, the guest was an author and, you know, the host asked like, what, what advice again, like, what advice would you give? And she was like, just start writing, you know, just, just start, just get it, get it out, just start. And it's like, once you start, you can keep going. The hardest part is to start, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's the hardest. Once you start, you can just keep going and, you know, and then you can always change. Like you, you're going to have an editor to look over your things. They're going to help you make the book the best that you can make it. And so it's, it's going to change, but it's just starting the hardest part. Um, so yeah, so definitely connect with other writers and authors on, on what particular book you want to write. Did you ever have a point in your writing with your blogs or maybe even with your book or even your podcast where you're like, who am I to get behind a microphone or pick up a pen or write a blog like who who would listen to me that imposter syndrome we talk about oh yeah did that ever come across for you oh uh, yes i doubt myself a lot actually and when i do I, like i'll question like god what what am i doing like who like who am i to do what i'm doing but then he always sends one person that tells me like they either send me a message or they leave a comment that says like thank you you know, thank you for this video. Thank you for this episode. Thank you for this article because it connected with them. Like, for example, I there's this uh, lady who's older than me, and she reached out to me after she saw one of my um, videos on YouTube. And she was like, thank you for sharing this. Like, you really like I've been wanting to write devotionals and children's books and things like that. And she was like, you really inspired me to like do it right yeah. and she you know like she's older so it's like it like there's people from everywhere that are looking at you um and you can just and like just inspire that one person and i'm telling you it just makes you feel like yes this is this is why so yeah i definitely doubt myself i definitely have that imposter syndrome sometimes but god always sends me that reminder that i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing it for his work and in, in his kingdom how do you argue with that, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? How do you argue with that? Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so what what is the best way for people to connect with you? I think that there might be people listening to this or watching us today, and they're like, I would just love to sit down with Heidi and, and ask her a few questions about her writing, or yeah. I would love to talk to her about her podcast. There's so many things, right? Yeah. Um, what is the best way for people to find you? Where are you most active? Instagram. I yeah. am on Instagram. Yeah, I, I say it like that because I have a love hate relationship with Instagram. <laughs> yeah, but I I can't I can't get away from it. I'm just there. 
<laughs> um, it's, yeah, so you can connect with me on Instagram. Honestly, also, uh, Twitter has a very supportive co- uh, writing community. So I'm actively on Twitter, but Instagram is where I mostly hang out at. Okay, we'll put all the links in the show notes. What's one of these books that you are so passionate about? You said you like to review books and stuff. What's one that you're like really excited about right now? On top of yours, obviously. Right. Oh, wow. Right now, I'm actually reading three books. Well, I'm listening to one and reading two. Okay. So I am reading uh, uh, this book called um, Far From Home. And she is. she was actually on my podcast. Her episode is not um, published yet, but she's an immigrant from India. And her book is about that, is about... Um, you know, her immigration story to the United States, but then also reminding people that, you know, we are foreigners on earth and our long-term home is going to be in heaven. So Mm. she navigates, you know, that like reminding us about that. And then her immigration story, it's been so beautiful to read her story, but then also I got the chance to speak with her on my podcast. So I'm reading that right now and I'm going to write a blog post about like a book review and I'll link it to the episode to my podcast. So I try to like, you know, intertwine all my things together. Yeah. Very smart. So I'm reading that and then I'm reading relationship goals, uh, by pastor Michael Tan. And he, um, talks a lot about it start the book is starting off like uh, a lot about singleness and how people, you know, are very like, like the things that we're supposed to do while we're single and waiting to to be married, um, but he help, but it also helps a lot with like relationships, like friendships and and things like that. So I I really like how his writing style, honestly, is like very very real for a pastor. You know, like he's very real and and things like that. And it was interesting to see his story with his wife. Like he shares that too. And then I'm listening to Out of the Cave by Chris Hudges, and he's also a pastor. His church is in Alabama, I believe, and this one is about mental health. Um, so it's about depression and anxiety, and that I rec- I'm recommending to anybody who's dealed with any um, mental health issues because it's very, very practical. He has a lot of resources in that book. And, you know, um, it's faith-based, so they talk about um, the prophet Elijah a lot, uh, his struggle that he went through. So, yeah, so those are the very the books that are at the top of my head, because those are the ones I'm currently reading and listening <laughs> to, but, yeah. I love it. I love it. And that, and as well, your book is also yes, on the top course. of the list. <laughs> of course. Let's just yes. get that in there as well. Yeah. Um, it's amazing to have you on the podcast today, and, and I love you the... I love the story. I love the journey behind the story. And I love hearing your laugh oh, and <laughs> all those great things. You know, it's 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 great to connect with authors and, and see yeah. the journey, right? Mm-hmm. Is there is there a book two coming? What do you think? Wow, you're the second person to ask me that today. <laughs> today. Ding ding. I love it. Um I do. I do want to, con- I want to make the book a series. So the book is called Words from the Heart and I want to continue writing poetry book. Um, I also, when I went to therapy and I told, you know, my therapist, everything from childhood to where I was at that moment, she told me that I should write a memoir mm-hmm. because she told me what I went through it was when did I it, when I was talking to her I was like in my early 20s still yeah because I'm not even 30 I'm 29 so she told me what you went through people go through in their lifetime so she was like you need to write a book you need to get your story out there um so I've been thinking about you know writing a memoir like going more into details of everything but with the poetry I definitely want to um publish more books um so yeah, so there's definitely more books coming. <laughs> I love it. Okay, well, we'll if that does happen and when it does, not if, but when it happens, <laughs> you got to come back. Oh, we got to talk you. about the yes. next one. Is that all right? Yeah, of course. We, we'll put it in the calendar. It'll be a blue thing on the calendar. <laughs> It'll mix in with all the other blue things on your calendar. And you're so funny. <laughs> we will maybe we'll just it just happens and we'll have another podcast. I yes. think that's a great idea. What do you think? I love it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll make that happen. There, you have, let's just say, we won't put a lock on the door. You can come in anytime Aww. and talk about your next project. I would love that. Thank and the you, blogs, Dave. all that stuff. 
It's yeah. great to, to be with you today. Thanks for making time for us. Oh, thank you for having me. I feel so honored to be here. Well, after this is your second one. You don't have another one after this, do you? Uh, another no, podcast? No. no, okay. <laughs> no. I, yeah, I told well. you, I, I, I tend to do one a day, but my calendar got messed up and, you know, but no, these, these two that I've done today have been so, so awesome. Like after I do a podcast, whether I'm a guest or a host, like I feel so like this high, like I, I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I love that. Like I, I, like I told you before the recording, like I absolutely love doing podcasting. Like I do. Yeah. As a host too, like others, Times like this, I feel like I have to go run around the block. So yeah. I end up <laughs> taking my dog for a walk or something because I'm just like, yeah. I was so great talking to Heidi. So every single um, time I go, I I go to my husband I'm like, that was so great. Like that was yeah. so awesome. Like this is why I do what I do. Like I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I All understand right. completely. <laughs> so everyone, go listen to the podcast. Go uh, check out the blog, buy the book, and wow. support Heidi. And um. We're going to do all of that. So thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you, Dave. All right. We'll talk again soon, okay? Okay. All right. Hey, guys. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Jump over to livingthenextchapter.com, our website, and you will see a spot where you can leave a voice message. We'd love to hear your feedback. We're trying to make it as easy as possible to hear from you. So if you want your voice on this podcast, yes, that's possible. Go to livingthenextchapter.com. Click the little icon, little microphone icon. Leave a voice message. We'll insert your message into the podcast. Tell us where you're listening from. Uh, Tell us your favorite guest. Maybe there's a guest we should have on the podcast. Maybe you should be our next guest. Leave us a message. Livingthenextchapter.com. Again, thank you so much for listening. Please share this podcast episode with one person. That's all we're asking. Meet you over there at livingthenextchapter.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Love to hear from you. Till the next episode. It's coming up right away. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you for being part of Living the Next Chapter. Thank you for supporting our guests. Great day. MindShift Power Podcast, the podcast for teenagers and those who work with them. There's a huge problem in America today. There's a very large disconnect between teenagers and the adults who work with them. I'm looking to bridge that gap with real, raw, honest conversation, not held back by the chains of political correctness. You cannot solve a problem you do not understand. Want to understand teenagers today? listen to this podcast this podcast is for teens in the u.s and canada to learn more go to fatimabay.com slash podcast or just look for mind shift power podcast on any listening platform i look forward to you being a faithful listener